I think there were there were two people in particular that I think Pirates fans really um I, I don't want to say took offense, but that, that's probably the best way to put it. They took offense to your ranking. Um and we'll start with Nick Gonzalez. So I mean, yeah. first round pick. Nick Gonzalez came out of college, super MLB ready, bad. Everybody was saying, you know, this guy could compete for batting titles. Uh, the hit tool, I think you guys had it at like 70, you know, when he got drafted. Yeah. Um, yeah. The comment just posted up there is, <laughs> is Nick Gonzalez over? Is, is this, is this thing done or I, I, I mean, led, what led to, to your 23rd ranking? Yeah. So uh, some of it is the defensive piece of it where I don't think he's a shortstop. And so when you're talking about a likely second base only guy, it could be hard to find an obvious role for someone, you know, in like a multi-positional sense. Um, if there's, if he's not going to hit enough to just play second base every day. And so, you know, as soon as a guy like this, as soon as I don't think that's going to happen anymore, you got to move off of him like well below the guys who might still be a piece uh, you know, of like a platoon or something like that. So in Nick's case, some of this is pattern recognition from like other guys who I've over evaluated. And other than the leg kick, which is not the same, Kest- the way Keston Hura's hands work is exactly the same as Nick Gonzalez's. And the way Carter Keyboom's hands work is exactly the same as Nick Gonzalez's. Jeter Downs, that's another one that's pretty close. Um, yep. Uh, there's some guys from the left side. Sounds who are like it's like, over. <laughs> like this too, you know, J.J. Blade kind of. Oh. Um, any those guys whose hands work in like the loop, the way I would describe it is like a loop. And uh, it's sexy because when they do make contact, there's a lot of like – Oppo gap, you know, lovely Oppo gap doubles. And it just looks right. Like you look, it looks like they have lovely hitting hands and talent and in that bat to ball area. And I've bought into all of those guys, you know, in a big, big way um, at one point or another, except for maybe Blade. But, um, but, you know, at some point, the velocity at the upper levels especially in the big leagues has made those guys vulnerable and Hira has other issues and stuff like with chase. Um, but at some point that whole group was exposed and there are underlying indicators with Nick Gonzalez that to me scream that this is going to happen to this guy. And I was all about him at New Mexico state too. And, you know, throw out his triple slash line in college because they play on the surface of the moon in Las Cruces. Yeah. It was PlayStation numbers. Yeah. yeah. Um, And, you know, some of the guys here in the Southwest, you forget like after Coors field, Chase field is the second highest elevation. Like the elevations here in the Southwest, they'll trick you. Willie Calhoun's numbers in, uh, in junior college were also like, wow. Um, but anyway, Nick Gonzalez. So some of these underlying indicators are obviously folks can see his strikeout rate. Um, some of this data sourced from you know people in baseball. Uh, I've got you know in zone and overall contact rates and, and and swing and miss rates. All right. So if folks are listening to this now, and go to the, go to the Fangraphs leaderboards, go to batting, click on the batting leaderboards, and then click on plate discipline, and then sort. So that you're looking at the worst couple guys in terms of end zone contact rate. Sort so that you're looking at the worst couple of guys with regard to end zone contact rate. I'm not doing it. But, but uh, 75 per, Josh Donaldson, actually. It's 75%. Okay. Nick Gonzalez's end zone contact rate in 2022 was 68%. Mm-hmm. So, what am I supposed to do? Okay. The other stuff is not bad. Like the power production, like, you know, in addition to this guy went as high as he did for a reason. Okay. You know, it, I understand why. And I was in on him in college as well. There's not everybody was. There are people who 
I had some I told you so conversations with you know people over the phone as I was working on the pirates list, people who in the past have warned me that I was being tricked by this by this guy. Um, so I get it on both ends, pirates fans. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> that you know don't kill the messenger. I mean, you continue to shout into the void of online that I don't see like you're welcome to do that. <laughs> but like I'm not this isn't a cavalier process, you know. Like I'm really putting like I'm putting it down when I'm working on your team's fucking lists. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, and it takes a lot to like admit you were wrong about Nick Gonzalez, which at one point, yeah, like I really like this guy. So it's pretty rough um, when you're not mixing in real defensive versatility or like impactability on that end with a, an average to above power, and like 30 grade, like that's a 30 on the scale is, uh, you know, a 68% in zone contact rate and a 63 and a half percent overall contact rate. Like, yeah, I put a 30 on this guy's bat because that's how it's been. And so, you know, I don't know what else to do. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it's disappointing. I wanted him to be good, but his infield mate at New Mexico State, Joey Ortiz, is like the better player. And it's funny that it worked out that way. I can't think of a single area scout who had them lined up like that at the time. Um, those are my guys here in the four corners who, you know, I see at the field all the time. And um, so, yeah, it's disappointing. But when you're when you're trying to find a role for this guy, like it's tough. It's it's hard. And, it, you know, it might just he might just bottom out entirely. But even if it doesn't he's like a backup second baseman. Like, what do you think this guy is? Um, he doesn't hit left-handed. Like there are all sorts of dudes who just end up stacked on a depth chart higher than a guy who only hits this much. Let me ask you this question too, because not in the same regards of Henry Davis, but Nick Gonzalez hasn't really had a little, whole lot of health um, in his pro career as well. You know, and there's a comment here about maybe, you know, changing his swing, you know, with his injury last year, like how much do you think you talked a little bit about Henry Davis? How much do you think maybe the injury is playing into a lot of these inefficiencies with Nick Gonzalez well, and how much of it is just pure talent? I don't know what Gonzalez's injury was off the top of my head. Certainly the fact that the injuries have made his sample size smaller makes it less dependable. Um, but yeah, look at that. I do mention Jeter downs in the blurb, don't I? Yeah, that's great. Good job. Um, but like, yeah. So I don't. I don't think I have it in the blurb what the injury was. But just because the specificity the knee, of knee, he hurt his okay. knee at one point. He had a yeah. hand before that. Foot, it was a it foot injury. Hand. No, he missed ten weeks with a foot injury. Okay. So you know, like Henry Davis is is more specific. Like there's a track record of hitters whose power just goes away for like months and months after they've had a hamate. Or wrist fracture. It's just so such a big, you know, part of your ball striking power is like getting your wrist through. So um, here, you, yeah, maybe, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Are you maybe like? Can we maybe buy into the second half splits that we've seen through Nick Gonzalez, where he suddenly gets better after like July? I, I, yeah, okay. I didn't know if, if you, you actually, want. Well, it's, I'm. We're asking you, Eric. It's all about look. I know I have a three on the guy's bat, so that's what I think. But if you want to, you know, ah, you know, ah, what maybe (laughs) it's all about how you want to interpret that context. I don't think it's enough. Like for me, just having watched this guy swing underneath fastballs at his gut and above, like I'm scared enough that I put him 23rd. That might end up just being too high. Because if I'm right about what's happening with the contact piece of this here, like he's nothing at all. So I guess like I'm sure anyone who's besmirching my name on, you know, the (laughs) annals of social media will be sure to send me an apology note if I end up being right. Like I bet everyone is, is gung ho to do that. Right. But, uh, but like, that's just what I think. So like, yeah, no, like I don't think clearly I don't think that. I Eric, wouldn't buy into his second. I got to be honest with you. Like just two days ago, I tweeted when Nick Gonzalez's swing comes together, it is a beautiful sight. It just it doesn't happen. And you just kind of put it all together for me. 
and I'm kind of annoyed with you by it. <clears throat> but we, we've actually <laughs> seen it in the little tiny sample size of spring training so far. Like he had the home run, I think, yesterday. And he yeah. struck out like seven times since then. Like that's like his whole spring training is he's. But that home run just, was so pretty. The home run was pretty, but then he just swings and misses through. Like that else. swing just looked perfect. And so, like obviously, I'm you know running. There's a guy who scouts for the Pirates who worked for us, you know. So like I'm talking this through with people with the Pirates, and like they 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 think I'm wrong too. So you know. Just so folks know, like the Pirates believe in in Nick Gonzalez still, and probably weren't happy about me coming off of him. But you know, I I gotta call it like I see it, and sometimes that means I gotta eat it from you know past evaluations. And so um, it's funny because now, like, if he ends up being good, I guess I just realized this that I could say, yeah, like he was third on my draft board. Good job, me um, to myself. You know, that's who would, I would say it to. But um, but now, yeah, yeah, guys, like, he's almost 24, which is still okay. But, ah, you know, double A, 24-year-old guy, better better rake. Better be a good April and May for Nick Gonzalez. I mean, if you look at the triple slash, it, it looks like he rakes-ish. Underline, yeah, yeah, like 20% <laughs> above league average double A. That's been the argument that, you know, People, including in the org, were just like, "Hey, like, you're gonna crush this guy for." And I don't think it's crushing him to put a four on on a guy to be sure, but like, um, but yeah, it's scary. I think there's there's so much bus risk there. There's so much bus risk there. Fair enough. Fair enough. So there's your answer, Pirates fans. <laughs> and like you did, I mean, you you, you dropped the works there. The works there. It's hard to argue what you're saying. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> I used to be on the internet, so I know what it's like to have to, you know, operate in there and, and fight. And uh, so, like, yeah, this is definitely, you know, part of the reason it takes so goddamn long to do all my lists is because this is, I'm trying to, like, really hammer away to make it thorough. Thank you all. Thank you for watching. I know we try to provide the most entertaining content that we can, uh, and we'd love to spread it to as many people as possible. So uh, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you could take the five seconds to like this video and subscribe to the page, it helps out so much more than you know. Thank you, and let's go Bucks.